I brought this gourd rattle, which we use today. This represents the world. When you go prayer, meditate, and fast, you hold this white handle and you hold this world in balance. To prayer, meditation, sermon, most all and any people know this. That's how we take care of this Mother Earth. And there's a timing here. And we are close to the last stages. If no one correct change these wrongdoings in this land, there'll be a purification take place. Four directions will come and we'll really punish, severely punish those who misuse the power they develop and destroy animal, birds, and human beings with it. These are some of the things, that terrible things that I hope you know, and I like to tell you this because today nature is active also. There's terrible earthquakes right now, different places, landslide, tornadoes, hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, tidal waves, hailstorm getting bigger and powerful that it may destroy many nations, buildings soon. If we do not stop messing with chemical stuff, releasing this bad chemical stuff that's gonna go up in the air, there'll be a, like a gas fume up there. They said it might burn up someday. We're gonna have fire up there in the sky. We're getting close to that time. And that bad air will come closer and closer. Birds flying up there, they fall down. People run up high level, exercise, they breathe that bad air, bad air they're gonna fall over. Bears come into the cities, warning of people that human beings are chopping down trees, their homes, their food. They come and tell you, but they don't understand. Whales came into San Francisco telling the people, you polluting pollution air, uh, uh, ocean out there, we can't live anymore. You must stop it, but we don't listen. These are some things that the Hopi were concerned when they throw that gold full of ashes on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, burn everything to ashes, leaving things underwater so hot that many things died from heat. There's weight, poison air floating there, still coming, affecting animal birds and plant life, deformed babies appearing, and in the Hopi and Navajo area, they pick up this uranium, they left thousands of tons of uranium waste, creating sickness, cancer, death, deformed babies appearing more and more. Somebody have to clean this mess up. And I believe the United Nations should do that with their laws, rules and regulations. That's why the Hopi wants to find out. So he came over here uh, one time, but they will let us speak in the assembly. First time, the leaders here. But I now, I told him that I made my commitment my, to my elders that I must do what I can to see if the, I can help to open a door for the future leaders in this world. Because I see Orm Lyon, a spokesman of Six Nations, knows this. And I traveled with him and many others across the country six years to revive our culture, religion, and ceremony because we're going to need that soon. And we, support, we, we form a spiritual circle, which is the foundation of our native people. So we met many leaders, spiritual leaders, and some of the healers, or some called medicine people, they heal their people in their own area. That is the thing is that we don't want to let go of. But now, big corporations, with the help of some political figures, start going out into the Four Corners area, strip mining coal, uranium, gas, and oil. A lot of time they pressure young people to sign contracts which they don't understand. And they find out they gave that land to the government or big corporations. And they're, they're testing this uranium power, underground testing in Nevada, that should stop because there's danger there. It's going to create many uh, sickness there. It's going to spread out. It's one of those 
tornadoes rip that up. Millions of people are going to die in a few seconds, wherever that uranium plant is set up. And they are going to bring more problems upon themselves when they mess with the moon and stars. They said they'll have power to get to the moon someday. And they told us, don't, don't bring down anything from that moon to Earth because we already have unbalanced things down here. And if we bring something down from moon to Earth, we're going to have more tidal waves, more earthquakes, seasons going to change so much. And there will be long sicknesses we can't cure for many, many years. These are some things already here. And so we are getting close to this last stage is according to this uh, timing in this Mother Earth. And they will start messing with moons and, moon and stars. And sooner or later, they said the last thing the human being able to invent would be a great big house way up in the sky someday, carrying people and things. When that becomes fulfilled, then this whole world will be in trouble because they already use the power that developed here, they sent it to Korea, they sent it to Vietnam, they sent it to Mexico, and other places. Thousands, millions of people are dying from that. Sooner or later, somebody's going to have the most powerful thing and they're going to throw it here. Destroy cities and towns in a few seconds. Burn to ashes in a few seconds, like they did in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They have more powerful atom bomb today than what they throw in here in Nagasaki. And this is what old people are talking in 1948. That really impresses me. So I volunteered to spread this message. And Hopi means peace for a person, kind, gentle, truthful, humble person. And the Hopi don't believe in army or going in a war, go to other, other countries to disturb land and life and the place. They said if we do that, we are great, we inviting greater punishment in later time. So don't go over there and destroy life any place. Our way is to take care of this land and life in balance through prayer, meditation, and sermon. That's the only way we are going to survive in later, later time. So they had registered uh, many young people to go in the army. First World War, terrible thing happened. But the humans don't understand the problem, the misery of many people, many death, but they improved their instruments of warfare and they have a second world war. And that's what they throw had and bomb. And the Hopi said, now we are entering the most difficult period in our life. We must clean up this mess. If we start cleaning up this mess, many life will be able to survive and go on into good life again. But if we don't clean up this, we can have all this instrument developed, highly developed, and pretty soon we're going to burn ourselves up to ashes, they said. So we have two roads, a spiritual path led by the great spirit that we are taking care of this land in that way. White brother came, we put him up on the upper road, materialistic path. He was inventing many things and he thinks he could make more power and money and good time and he's gonna blow the whole world up. And there's a line where we may be able to come, that's where we are today. And the Hopi say, we have known two world wars, already gone, it's possible that we may create Third World War. And the Hopi felt Persian Gulf was the beginning of Third World War, but it stopped. They did not use all the most advanced military destructive things, but it stopped. And there's now a chance for all people around the world to weigh that, what we are doing in that way. Are we gonna bring peace and justice and happiness, religious freedom, equality, human rights by doing that any place? It's time we put that aside. It's time 
we get the leaders who are doing that big corporation to stop going out and for money chopping all the trees every day, polluting rivers everywhere, taking land and life from native people whose life was being uprooted, uprooted every day. Thousands of people are destroyed in this country. And I talk to the people about spiritual things. And they said, the white brother is supposed to know this. And they told me, many grandparents used to tell me when they were growing up, don't you lie, don't you steal, don't you take anything that doesn't belong to without permission. And the same principle that white brother had in the Bible. And every president of the United States when get in the chair to swear on that Bible. I think somebody is violating the law of the great spirit law of nature. I think we're going to head it, we are headed for the most destructive thing if we do not correct change and turn around and make life beautiful, clean, and lasting for the great spirit. And that's what the Hopi say, that they will do all they can to help this, keep this land in balance. So when Second World War came, I did not register because I said hope it means peace, kind, gentle, truthful, and humble person. I didn't, I didn't register for the army. So no FBI caught me and put, put me in county jail for a whole month, no trial, no question of anything. They kept me in the prison for a whole month, then let me go. Second time they picked me up and threw me in prison again for three weeks and they finally gave me a year and a day in federal prison camp in town, down Tucson. We were building a road up on top of Mount Lemon down Tucson. I spent a year and a day over there. When I came out, released from that, I was just working with my elders, religious leaders. Then I got picked up again. This time I was put in jail for five years for not registering. I want to be peace for a person, humble person. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to destroy people on the other side of the world. It's come from my heart. It comes from my people's belief that we must not go in the army. No native people should be forced to go in the army. It's a white people supposed to protect this land and take care of these native people here, not use them. But that, that has happened because sooner or later, purification will take place and there's no way out of it. So these are some of the things that I felt I need to bring to this body here and stressing upon you to hurry up, send a letter to the Hopi that they will open a door so that Hopi elder, religious leader who worship this will come and speak to you in his own language and he will tell you many things that he belongs to the high society, which I do not, and they will tell you more things. And I'm sure that Six Nations has men like that who will come also, and other four direction leaders. This is what I like to see. And I felt the world is really in trouble right now. Like in Oxford University, 1988, Orm Lyons were the only one that went over there and they said, what shall we do? The world's in trouble. We all live in this one world. Who has the answer? Spiritual leaders, 100 spiritual leaders, or 100 political figures, or grassroots people? Who has the answer? We need to survive. This is what they're saying. So Orm Lying was there, and I'm very happy that he gave us a chance to uh, also some of the people In, uh, and then the uh, Six Nations know the drawing that I have, and I just want to show you just that. I won't explain it, but we have this prophecy on the wall out here in the Hopi country, and they have that same kind of thing in the Six Nations with us. Turn around there. Move over a little bit. That white part is on the rock near Uribe. The two roads and we're right in here.
We either go out in advance and scientific and blow ourselves up now with the most powerful instrument of warfare, or come back to the spirit field of our native people who are here holding to this land and life through prayer, join with them and correct our wrongdoings here. Then, great spirit who gave us this land and life will come back and then welcome those that are able to survive. So this four corners area is very important. They said that is surrounded by four sacred mountains. That is a spiritual center that must be protected by all people. So that is why I felt that I should show you a little bit of this. So I just is all I want to tell you now. And I hope that we will have more of our native people telling you some of the things so that United Nations people do something with their laws, rules, and regulations and without war. I saw a, a letter of crushed building here. The Bible verse that thou shalt turn all our plowshares into plowshares and study war no more. Let us do that now. Thank you. <laughs>